Hello, I'm Dr. Elias Jabour. I will be discussing Blinatumumab map versus chemotherapy for advanced acute lymphoblastic leukemia or TAWA trial by Dr. Kentarjan and his colleagues published in New England Journal of Medicine in March 2017. In summary, Blinatumumab map is superior to standard of care chemotherapy in patients with relapsed refractory Philadelphia negative ALL. There was an improvement in response rate and overall survival, and that was the primary endpoint of the study. The importance of this article is in establishing a new standard of care for patients with relapsed refractory ALL. In this multi-institutional phase three trial of adults uh, with relapsed refractory Philadelphia negative ALL, 405 patients were randomly assigned in a two to one ratio to receive either blinatumumab 271, a bispecific monoclonal antibody construct that enables CD3 positive T cells to recognize and eliminate CD19 positive ALR blast, or standard of care chemotherapy, 134 patients. This standard of care can include fludarabine based regimen, high dose of therabine, uh, regimen, what we call the flag, with or without intracycline, high dose therabine based regimen, or high dose metotrexate based regimen, or clofarabine based regimen. The two treatment groups had similar demographic and disease characteristics at baseline when all patients who underwent randomization were assessed. The primary endpoint of the study was overall survival. I must mention that the primary endpoint was met early enough uh, due to the survival benefit obtained uh, in a blunt-to-map arm. Key secondary endpoints included achievement of a complete remission with CR with full hematoid recovery within 12 weeks after initiation of treatment, achievement of a CR with full, partial, or incomplete hematoid recovery within 12 weeks after initiation of treatment, and event-free survival as defined, the time from randomization until relapse after achieving a CR with full uh, or partial uh, count recovery or death. Other secondary endpoints included the duration of CR, the measurement of minimal renal disease and the rate of allergic stem cell transplantation and of course, adverse events encountered. So let's focus on the key findings. Well, as I mentioned, the primary point was overall survival. This primary point was met. The median overall survival was 7.7 .7 months in the blindumab group compared to four months in a chemotherapy group with a hazard ratio of 0 0.71, highly significant. With a median duration of follow-up of 11.7 and 11.8 months respectively for the two arms. The estimated survival at six months among all patients who underwent randomization was 54% in a blinatumumab group and 39% in a chemotherapy group. The treatment benefit with respect to overall survival was generally consistent across key subgroups. The remission rate within 12 weeks after the initiation of therapy were significantly higher in a blinatumumab group compared to the chemotherapy group. The CR rate was 34% for the blinatumumab arm versus 16% for standard of care. And if you consider all responses together, means CR and CR without full recovery of the count, uh, the rate of responses were 44% with the blinatumumab compared to 25% with standard of care. And of course, this uh, difference is uh, statistically significant. Now, if you look at the patient who responded to achieve a CR with or without full count recovery, 76% of the patient who responded after blinatumab therapy achieved what we call MRD negative status at 10 to minus 4, compared to 48% of patients who responded after standard of care. Among the patients who had a CR with or without full count recovery, the median duration of remission was 7.3 months compared to 4.6 in the group treated with standard of care. Now let's look at the secondary endpoint. For the key secondary efficacy endpoint of event-free survival, the six months estimate was 31% with a blinatumumab compared to 12% in a chemotherapy group with a hazard ratio of 0 0.55 and p-value being significant. Now overall, the treatment was well tolerated. The serious adverse event reported in a blinatumumab group uh, were 62% compared to 45% in a chemotherapy group. However, the fatal adverse events reported were 19% in a blinatumab group compared to 17% in a group of patients who received chemotherapy.
investigators consider fatal adverse events to be related to the treatment of abdominal or chemotherapy in eight patients or 3% and in eight patients or 7% of patients who received standard of care. The incidence of a grade three or higher adverse event of interest that were characterized as neutropenia or infection was lower with ablinatumumab than with chemotherapy. In contrast, neurologic events of grade three or higher occurred at a similar rate in the two groups. The rate of treatment discontinuation due to any adverse event were 12% in the ablinatumumab group and 8% in the chemotherapy group including 4% and 1% respectively due to neurologic event and 1% and 0% due to the cytokine release syndrome. In the blinatumab group, adverse event of interest in the category of the cytokine syndrome were reported as serious adverse events in 4% of the patient and as events of greatly or higher in 5% of the patients. Now, after adjustment for differences in treatment exposure, between the two groups, the rate of serious events were lower overall in a blinatumab group compared to standard of care. I think uh, the TAWA trial is a very important landmark trial that established blinatumab as standard of care for patients with large refractive disease. The study has shown that the blinatumab can induce higher response rate and improvement of overall survival. At the same time, the treatment was found to be safe and effective compared to standard of care. So how do you use the drug? So the drug is being given, is being given over four weeks, continuous infusion, at the scalation of the dose, nine micrograms per day for the first week, then 28 micrograms per day for subsequent days of treatment. We had a high response rate and overall survival. Furthermore, when we look at the outcome among patients who received salvage one treatment, we had a better survival of 11.8 seven months compared to five months for standard of care. So I think a map is established as standard of care for patients with, with relapsed refractive disease, mainly as well the advantage is seen in salvage one setting more so than advanced space diseases. Something of importance as well, not only patients do respond, but they do respond and achieve a deep response. And that is really important because at the long run, if you want to improve survival of these patients, you need to have a deep response, the deepest possible, and then consolidate them with either map or transplantation. And this is one of the advantages of the drug we have. Now, for adverse events, two common things, or at least two specific things for a map treatment is the neurologic events encountered as well as cytokine release syndrome. Let me start with the second one. Uh, essentially, we use the cytokine release syndrome early on in patients with a high disease burden. The protocol of the TOWER trial did specify to use a debulking approach with steroid low dose of chemotherapy followed by map, And if we do so, we essentially minimize the occurrence of uh, the cytokine release syndrome. And whenever they occur, usually we hold therapy of their grade three, uh, we wait for the recovery and then we resume while we're giving steroid to our patient and resume at the lower dose and dose escalate subsequently. Another adverse event encountered is uh, the neurologic event. Overall, if you consider the exposure to the drug, it's not as significantly higher than uh, the standard of care. In fact, it's similar or less, but one should be uh, careful about the side effect. And usually the whole therapy for grade three, we give steroid and resume at the lower dose. In addition, when we look at the patient with uh, for the quality of life, uh, we see an improvement of the quality of life of patients who receive the blenatumumab compared uh, to patients who received the standard of care. Now that was in a TOWER trial. Blinatumab is effective as well in a pH positive disease. Uh, there was a separate phase two study called Alcantara trial that established a blinatumab as standard of care for patients with relapsed refractive disease, pH positive ALL. Now where we're going with this data? Uh, in pH positive, we're combining TK and blinatumab uh, to further improve this outcome. And uh, for Philadelphia negative, we're moving map in an earlier stage than later, including MRD, of course, uh, and frontline uh, ongoing trials are assessing the role of map in a, a frontline uh, setting. Uh, the drug was shown to be effective as well in patients with uh, pediatric disease, uh, with, uh, in pediatric patients with ALL relapsing, uh, we have significant activity as well observed. One last comment about this trial. There was a concern when I give a blend to a map and patients do fail, they may lose the expression and that would compromise their uh, uh, 
chance of getting subsequent CAR T cells. We have shown that, uh, in fact, more than 92% of the patients retain their CD19 expression and therefore can be candidate for a treatment with CAR T cells down the road. So what is the, uh, how this information impacts my practice? I think today, uh, a blitamab is standard of care for patients with relapsed refractory uh, ALL, and I think their use should be uh, earlier uh, than later. Uh, as a bridge for transplantation or as a strategy with a maintenance with a blitamab if transplant is not considered. Uh, moving forward for the future, I think, uh, Benetumab is being assessed, it already approved for MRD and we will discuss uh, later today, but uh, uh, the Benetumab it's finding, uh, it's finding its way to the front line. There are several ongoing trials, randomized and phase two, assessing the role of Benetumab in the front line. Now, of course, it's not all. Uh, uh, what are the un unanswered questions today? I think uh, we need Logistically, blentumab is still uh, cumbersome in a way you have to give it over four weeks. Uh, we're working to get to the clinic uh, 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 the specific, similar bites or similar to blentumab, but with long half-life that will allow us to give it on a um, weekly infusion that will uh, uh, that will uh, really help a lot. And then the frontline move of blentumab will uh, hopefully allow us to use less chemotherapy and less transplantation.